Hello and welcome back to Flores Expanded. If you'd like to download the mod, then there is a link in the description. Otherwise, we are currently in a battle against some Sea Raiders. I thought that I would take the opportunity to uh, maybe take on a couple of these guys in a somewhat safer environment. And you may be, you may be asking, hey, what, what, what kind of safer environment could there be? Well, there's a uh, group of manhunters currently in the battle with them. And I'm actually just going to tell the cavalry just to straight up charge because I don't really have any cavalry at the moment and I would very much like to... Uh, Woohoo! Yeah, that's exactly my point. Do you see the amount of damage that they're capable of dealing? It's pretty insane. But thankfully these sea, ra sea raiders are somewhat, uh, shall we say, not exactly well armored. And so as a result we should be perfectly fine in eliminating quite a few of them in the attack, as you can see. Not too bad. And if we can eliminate quite a few, then we should have a pretty decent time here. And I have leveled up as well, as far as I'm aware. I think I have leveled up to level 5. Ah, oh, no, never mind. I've actually leveled up to level 6 now. That's kind of insane. Very, very fast leveling in Warband, that's for sure. As long as you can get some kills, then you should be absolutely fine. Didn't really want to send in any of my units, because, let's face it, the Manhunters could certainly use... Um, well, they don't really need the practice, do they? But I didn't really want to use any of my people, so we didn't lose anyone, and uh, no one died, and all that stuff. But we can actually rescue some prisoners here, and we can actually take these manhunters, which is absolutely fine. Now, I do need to get some prisoner management, because being able to capture these sea raiders is going to be a very important thing for us. Uh, well, technically, eh, yeah, you, you don't really need to. You don't really need to capture people if you don't want to. It's not a requirement but it is going to help you to earn some slight additional cash as time goes on. So this is actually a better shield than what I was wearing, and these are better boots as well. This was the main reason why I wanted to go in here versus these guys, because they're just going to give you so much good stuff. And all of this stuff can sell for a decent amount. It's not going to sell for a huge amount or anything like that. And also, here's the cool thing about Floris. You can let your companions collect all the items and continue. So if I wanted to... I could basically make it so that they just took basically everything like that. I could just, you know, let them take everything and then it's going to go into their inventories and I don't have to worry about it at all. So let's, let's actually just go over here. We're just going to level up our people into militia once again. Let's have a look at Mattel's equipment because obviously she's going to be getting an upgrade now. Yes, there we go. Very nice. Good upgrade for her. Does she have some throwing skill? No, I don't think she has any throwing skill or she has a very small amount of it at least. And I think that is perfectly fine for her. Is she wearing some... Yeah, we can give her a little bit of an upgrade in terms of her shoes. And she hasn't leveled up or anything like that. We also have Yamira and we also have Behesh Tur, So we definitely need to get them some better equipment. I think Yamira is probably going to be staying with us for quite some time, potentially. Unfortunately, she doesn't have the strength. I think she starts with six strength initially. And as a result, she's not going to be able to do really that much at all which is kind of unfortunate. So it seems like she will have to... Oh, she doesn't even have shield one. Oh, that's, that's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, seems like she will have to level up from passive experience gains alone, which is, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while for her to do that, but hopefully not too long. All right, so we've got some good good boots right there. I could technically... I think I could give Heshter anything I like. Yes, he is, he is well equipped by the looks of things. This is a pretty decent sword for him, so I'm not actually going to give him this new axe because the sword has a pretty decent weapon reach and the axe does not. It has 61, so it's not going to be very good. What about the Nord bow? He can actually use a bow and we're going to give him the arrows as well because he has three in power draw. Yeah, three in power draw. He is also going to be our pathfinder. As you can see, he's got a base intelligence when you first recruit him of 12. So that's going to be very, very important for us. Let's also spec our points a little bit here. And I'm actually wondering whether I should spec into intelligence just a little bit, because here's the thing. I wasn't actually going to do that. I wasn't going to spec into intelligence whatsoever. I was basically just going to let my companions deal with the intelligence-based uh, skills like, uh, you know, first aid, surgery, wound treatment, pathfinding, tactics, and so on. So... Not entirely sure if I want to do that. Maybe what we'll do is we'll level up agility and strength with the two points that we have. We'll get some points in prisoner management. I'm not going to spec anything more than maybe one or two points in it because if I take five prisoners and then go and sell them, then that's that's pretty good. I don't really want to waste any more points 
on it if I can help it. So otherwise, I'm going to be specking into shield, I think. Shield, in my opinion, is probably the most, uh, most useful thing that I can currently take. We're going to go for some throwing skill here and, uh, and things like that because we haven't actually gone for any power draw yet. I know I said that I might end up using a bow, but I'm now thinking that we might just end up using throwing weapons because they are... Well, they are quite quite powerful. They are quite strong. And I don't really need to worry about uh, leveling up power draw or anything. And I already have one in power throw. So it kind of makes sense. Anyway, we're going to just uh, go here. We're going to just auto resolve this real quick. Because the enemy casualties are going to be super fast. And we can now gain some additional manhunters. What do the farmers actually level up into? It seems like they level up into mercenary units. So I will take some of those just to see exactly um, what happens with them. And I do have a pretty significant amount of people now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be on the lookout for some sea raiders. And uh, we'll hopefully be able to um, fight them. <laughs> yes, it's easier said than done. Easier said than done, in my opinion. Okay, so now what we can do is we can also sell items. Wait a minute. How do I, how do I sell items with my companions here? Because I seem to remember that we can do that through this. Yep, there you go. That's exactly what we what we want to do. So as you can see, she sold 19 items, which is really, really cool. And I wonder whether I can actually sell price limit for auto sell. So I, if I make this 999, I think we can actually sell even more. So I'm just going to leave it at 999, I guess. And uh, I think I'll sell this. I'm going to buy a little bit more food. Let's go into the tavern, see if we can find any companions. Oh, wow, that's a cavalry six unit. That's pretty crazy. Okay, yeah. So we're just going to sell everything here. Oh, yeah, nice. So that tier 3 unit gave us 121 dinars. So you can times that by 5, which is our current, um, you know, current capacity. And that's pretty good. Hello there. Okay, so let's actually have a look and see if we can gain her. Uh-huh. Okay, let's have a look. Nope. Nope, not going to work. Not going to work. Okay, what about this one? 200. Okay, please join. Please join. Yes, absolutely. I am perfectly happy with this. Okay, so let's have a look and see what she is all about. Okay, does she have eight? Nope, she doesn't have eight strength or anything like that. She is a uh, she is an archer, so potentially a horse archer. That could be quite powerful for us. Yeah, she has three in power draw. She has two in horse archery. Yep, quite classic. Oh, nice. She's also got three in pathfinding already, so she's probably going to be our pathfinder if everyone gets on. I'm not too familiar with what companions hate each other in Floris because there are so many additions and uh, maybe I will need to disable companion complaints. Look at the amount of options here. Yeah, I'm going to just disable companion complaints because they're just way too annoying to deal with right now and otherwise these are my settings here. There's just so many. Wow, it is it is pretty crazy. Mm, we're going to... Uh, reassign dehorsed cavalry and no ammo archers to infantry and formations battle AI. I would, I think that would be pretty fun. Only active in field battles. Let's let's actually get that, and we can show you know HP bars and stuff like that. The battle map might actually be kind of useful. We're gonna just reduce this to 75%. It might be a little bit, uh, you know, let's let's do 70%. It might be too big as it is, so we can always change it around a little bit as time goes on, so it's not too bad. But anyway, let's uh, see if we can find some Sea Raiders. Usually there is going to be a quest around River Chegg, and that will enable us to attack a Sea Raider camp, and the Sea Raider camp is going to be fantastic. Oh yes, it's going to give us a huge amount. So let's actually just take a look. Who owns this? Who owns River Chegg right now? Mariga, of course, of course, as is always the standard. Let's have a look. There he is. Hello, Mr. Mr. Mariga. Yes, I would like to speak to you. And, ah, me, mm. yes, unfortunately, he is actually asking for us to deliver a message rather than deal with a, uh, a hideout nearby. So I assume there is no ba bandit hideout at the moment. All right, here we go. We found some sea raiders and there are 18 of them. This is going to be one of those fights where we can either lose really, really badly 
or we might actually be able to achieve some kind of victory where most of our people will probably end up dying. Let's face it, they will probably end up dying. I think 70% for the minimap actually seems really good. And um, that means that I won't have to summon the battle map any further and I can potentially avoid any kind of bugs. Because I seem to remember that if you bring up the battle map with the view orders button, then uh, you're going to get some kind of graphical error. And so um, hopefully we'll be able to avoid that. I don't think I have any archers. Nope. Don't think I have any archers. But I have a whole bunch of manhunters, which might be very, very useful for us. So I'm actually going to just place them on the hill over there. Let's tell our people just to charge straight on in here because, let's face it, we're going to take casualties no matter what. Let's tell our cavalry to charge in now as well. And hopefully my horse isn't going to get murdered immediately because that's exactly what happens most of the time for me. Especially against Z Raiders. They just have such good thrown weapons. As you can see, look at that. Massive damage being done here. Uh, I'd like to do some damage, potentially. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, this is not this is not really going to work out too well. Charge, fellows. Charge, fellows. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why they're not charging, but oh well, never mind. Okay, so it seems like we are going to achieve victory here. And now, here's the thing. The main reason why I wanted to get those Manhunters is for their ability to take prisoners i don't know whether you've noticed but they have unlocked they have knocked a whole bunch of them unconscious and as you can see there's seven of them which is really good and look at that seven renown we gained five c raiders we can also um get some some get some better loot oh yeah i'm gonna take that thank you and we almost have enough actually we almost have enough shield skill to be able to use these these much better shields as you can see this one is pretty awful i mean it's it's, it's good you know it's a good uh, starter shield but obviously something that you can use at a much higher skill level is going to be much better so for example this i could use this and this has a resistance of 13 in, in comparison to six so i'm actually going to use that instead and that is pretty much all i want to take mm, actually that's better. That's better than what I'm using. Hmm. Yeah, this is the kind of thing we want. We want this kind of thing, but not crude. If, if we can find something that is not crude, then we're going to be in a great position. So yeah, we're just going to now manage the upgrading of our equipment and things like that. So we're going to have a one-handed, we're going to have a shield, we're going to go for... What are we going to go for here? We're going to go for throwing weapons, I guess, for her or something like that. Just a throwing weapon one or two it doesn't really matter i suppose and then we can also upgrade armor upgrade horse i guess we'll upgrade the horse because most people are going to be on a horse and let's apply this to everyone and then we can just go through a couple of them as well so we'll just make yamira have shield and she'll probably end up using a crossbow as well i think a crossbow and bolts is going to be the best for her beheshta is once again He's probably, I, I don't know whether to give him a polearm or not, because him having a polearm might make the most sense. But he does have shield skills, so maybe we'll just leave him the way he is, and otherwise we'll just give him a bow and not bolts, arrows, thank you very much. And then otherwise we'll do the same thing here, so one-handed, shield, bow, and arrows. There we go. Okay, so that's perfect. Now that means they can just take everything. Look at this. Look at this. Look at how much how much they're getting. Is this good? It's so so good. And I believe that is indeed it. Okay. So now we can just let our companions take the rest of the loot, which is fantastic because that means it doesn't really affect us at all. And we can basically just go in here and sell these items automatically and there you go. We gained a huge amount, which is really nice. Okay, so is there anything else that I want to do here? Oh, I could go into the tavern. I don't think I've gone into the tavern yet. Oh, fantastic. Perfect timing. Perfect timing, mister. Look at that. 650 dinars for five sea raiders. Now, technically, I could do even better than that. Technically, what we could do is we could uh, maybe gain the next level. Uh, am I close? <laughs> no, not really. I am not that close, unfortunately. So we'll maybe have to do a little bit of something here to uh, maybe gain... Some extra experience, maybe doing a, a task. I mean, that's the reason why I wanted to do the Sea Raider hideout task, because that does give you a pretty significant amount of experience.
All right, so I just paid these uh, Tiger Bandits to uh, leave me alone, and there was a good reason for that. I didn't want to fight in the nighttime. However, maybe fighting in the nighttime... Ooh, okay, this is actually pretty bad. But anyway, <laughs> maybe fighting in the nighttime might have been a little bit more advantageous because, of course, of the ranged penalties that uh, units tend to have in the darkness. So it might make sense. They seem to have... Mm, they actually seem to have some uh, some cavalry. That's interesting. They usually don't have these, so that's uh, that's actually kind of cool for us, because that means that we can maybe eliminate half of their band already without us really having to worry too much about that. Let's tell my cavalry to charge in, and hopefully I will be able to get some kills in this battle as well, because that's the main main reason why I wanted to do this, getting Barney to the next level, because if we can get him to the next level, then we'll be able to get another point in prisoner management. As I said, we'll probably go for at least two points in it, and that will be pretty useful for us. We're going to tell everyone to charge in. Bear in mind that uh, Tiger Bandits are pretty... Uh, I wouldn't say they're dangerous, but I would say that they're kind of similar to forest bandits in the way that they act because of course they are they are somewhat mounted whereas forest bandits are not really mounted that much but it is kind of dangerous to be fighting them without a shield so there's also that as you can see being done a lot of damage here and it seems like our companions are actually doing a pretty decent job here as well my horse is not however because it is dead so let's see if i can just win the fight here. Win this duel. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I am outranging this guy like no one's business. Unfortunately, he is doing a lot of damage to me right now. He does have a piercing weapon, by the looks of things. So anytime someone has a piercing weapon or a blunt weapon, you can expect to take quite a bit of damage because it does have high penetration abilities against armor. And uh, yeah, if you have a cutting weapon, then that's obviously not so much. But uh, it really depends on how much power strike you have, of course. Anyway, we did end up losing four of our manhunters, which is a regrettable loss, of course, but we are instead gaining a whole bunch of other things, which is, in my opinion, perfectly fine. We can also let our people do some upgrading. As you can see, there's a massive amount of upgrades that they can get, which is really, really nice. And otherwise, we've got some gloves. Yeah, there you go. And this is one of the piercing weapons that the guy was actually using on me just now. But I personally love my heavy horse saber, so I won't be, um, won't be replacing it or anything like that. All right, so I'm pretty happy with my companions collecting all of the loot, and then we can head on back to Rivercheg. I've actually been looking around for more Sea Raiders, but it seems like there's not that many to be found, weirdly enough. Not entirely sure why that is, but there you go. We've also now sold a bunch more, and we have 3,800. I actually have a bit of a problem with food at the moment, so I should probably buy a little bit more. I'm going to sell all of this as well, I think. Shall we sell all of this or shall we just keep... Let's keep two just in case because it's not really hindering us at all at the moment. So it might make sense for us to just keep a little bit in reserve just in case one of our companions decides to level up. We're going to continue getting these Swadian pages leveled up too. And um, uh, do they have a uh, ransom broker in here? They might. Yeah. Oh, there's a farmer. Uh, do you have any idea who I am? Ah, okay. Well, apparently he doesn't care. Well, you're dead. And, oh, there's level 7. Thank you very much, belligerent drunk. I very much appreciate your um, experience donation. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. And otherwise, we'll sell all of our prisoners. Look at that, 390 for 3. Wow, Tiger Bandits actually seem pretty good. Or Tiger Bandits. And, uh, yeah, that is actually quite nice. So that means uh, what we're also going to do is we are going to be saving that village from marauding bandits. That is generally one of the best quests that you can do early on. And not purely for the fact that the rewards are good, but just just for the fact that it's it's good experience as well for your party. So I have leveled up, so that means we will be taking... Hmm, I'm thinking we'll probably take another point in Charisma here, because I will want to level up my leadership. But for now, we're just going to go for another point in Prisoner Management. I'm keeping these at 14 here, because eventually what's going to happen is I'll level up, and then I will want to go for something like... I don't know, Power Strike, Iron Flesh, things like that, and that is going to be the next level. So I'm just going to leave them the way they are because they don't really help us at the moment at all. Let's go for some two-handed, just in case I get into a tournament with some two-handed weapon proficiency. It's not really going to affect me too much to level up my one-handed or my throwing at the moment. 
So nothing really to worry about there. Otherwise, let us go in and fight 20 bandits. I actually hope I have enough. I might be in a bit of a... Hmm, might be in a bit of a problematic situation here. I think I have enough. I mean, you can see here quite clearly that I think we outnumber the opponent. And uh, we'll see if I can maybe get some kills. I might actually just get off my mount. Because I feel like me being on a mount has actually caused me to be uh, more of a target, shall we say, than I would usually be. So let me see if I can maybe get a couple of kills here. Hello. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Oh, oh, got shot. Okay, that seems to be working quite nicely. Yes, nice. Nice. Oh, yeah, I really like the customized uh, animations. They're really, really fun. There we go. He's down. Oh, there was actually a... What? Are you serious? There was actually a bandit right behind me. I thought my fellows would actually take care of that pretty easily, but apparently not. Okay, there you go then. Not bad at all. We were able to achieve victory there. Seven renown, that's the point. We're trying to farm renown as much as we can as well. And I am also farming honor, trying to farm as much honor as I can possibly get my hands on. Okay, so there you go. There's a little bit of extra honor there. And I was able to uh, also get my people some experience, as you can see. And there we go. We're actually starting to level up our pages into cavalry. Now, I have to safeguard these cavalry quite considerably. I do not want them to get killed for nothing. So me putting them at the bottom of our party list is pretty much the only way that I can do that at the moment uh, until we gain some kind of garrison, because obviously the garrison is going to be very important for us as well. I actually wonder, can I build a camp in Flores? Inspect your camp. Yes, look at that. You can actually spend 17 hours entrenching your campsite and things like that. You can re -dye your map if you so desire. You can also select a book to read and inspect your camp. What does that actually do? Let's have a look. Okay, so this basically just takes us in here. Oh, okay, okay. So it seems like we do not have the ability to create our own hideout or something along those lines, which is absolutely fine. I don't really expect that because Flores is indeed a uh, just a just a straight up improvement over native. Ooh, ooh, these could be very important for us to fight. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute. These guys are horse archers. You probably don't want to deal with those horse archers. And I'm, I agree. I agree with you. It's probably not a good idea for me to deal with these horse archers, considering the horse archer fix is enabled. Ah, actually, you know what? Maybe we should fight these tundra bandits instead. Tundra bandits instead of tiger bandits. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, this might be problematic. Did I level up? Nope. Okay, pretty far away from it. Okay, wait a minute. Come back here. Okay, are they gonna are they gonna join together? I don't think they're gonna join together, so that's perfectly happy with me. Oh yeah, it's very nice indeed. Okay, so 36 against 19. I'm not gonna send my cavalry in just in case. Uh, yeah, I think I think my uh, newly leveled cavalry unit is actually in here. Oh hello, they seem to be charging at us pretty fast. Okay, I'm gonna just try and distract as many of them as I can possibly do. <laughs> And uh, maybe we'll try and do some damage at the back here as well. I'm going to get shot in the back potentially as well if I ride away from them in a straight line. So I'm going to try and be a little bit, a little bit difficult to hit. There we go. There we go. Yes. Ooh, that guy almost got me. Did you see that? Yeah, that's that's pr pretty problematic. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge. I, I'm not going to leave them out of the fight because they still need experience, of course. But it is a bit dangerous for me to do that. I would not recommend doing that if you want to try and uh, keep your... Yeah, look at that. See? Look at that. Are you serious? That is... <laughs> that is the classic, isn't it? That is the absolute classic thing to happen. Ah, oh, amazing. Amazing, yes. So I send my cavalry in, and then literally mere moments later, the newly leveled up cavalry unit that I was saying to myself, yes, I would like to keep that guy alive as far as, you know, as fast as I possibly can. And then, boom, he gets killed. Crazy, crazy, well, not even a coincidence, really. It's, it's just the way that things go for me, for some reason. I don't know why that happened, but oh well, never mind. Okay, so at least we are able to get two more of those guys, I suppose. I mean, that's generally what I'm trying to do here. And we'll try and get some more things. Yes, as you can see, people actually do uh, equip themselves with some good stuff. And I don't really need to worry about any of this, I don't think. 
Uh, no, probably not because everyone is going to be upgrading themselves without me having to worry about anything. So I'm just going to let my companions take the rest. And we're going to go and fight these guys. Let's fight uh, fight the next... Oh, this might be bad. 31 versus 26. This this might actually be bad. Um, going to tell everyone to charge. Uh, apart from the cavalry, who's going to go over there? Because we do now have another two of those cavalry. And now I'm kind of worried that um, my forces are just going to get absolutely slaughtered. Ah, yeah. That's the graphical bug. That is the graphical bug right there. Yeah. We, we don't want to do that. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Thank you very much. So, yeah, retreating and, and going back into the fight is the way that you fix that. But, yeah, uh, mm. now we're in an environment that I'm not a big fan of. So I could technically retreat again if I wanted to, but I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is and we'll see if we can do something here. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge, tell my infantry to charge, because I have distracted a couple of them, and I will be trying to eliminate... The guys that are not on horseback and well maybe, maybe all of them <laughs> maybe every single thing single one that I can kind of get in range of there we go come on Barney come on you can do this okay yeah there's another thrown weapon guy ah got him nice Got him too. Very good. Okay, come on, guys. Charge them. Just charge them, fellows. I know that they have thrown weapons and things, and they want to use them, but still, I'd like them to just get right up into the uh, the grill of the opponent, basically. You know, just trying to, you know, make them feel like they cannot possibly win and do massive damage to their morale so that they end up retreating. We do have a couple of routing units on the enemy side, so that's good. That's good. That's absolutely fine. And there you go. There's a nice victory for us. Absolutely fine. I don't want to retreat. I have to wait for the message. I have to wait for the message. There we go. Seven Renown. We're getting Seven Renown pretty much every time, which is actually very nice. Didn't lose any cavalry this time, which is very, very good. And I'm going to be able to level up a whole bunch of units. Unfortunately, we don't have enough... Uh, <laughs> we don't have an ability to do auto-upgrade. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take some of these low-level things, and then we're just going to auto-upgrade from there, because that's... Uh, that's generally what you can do to make it a little bit easier on your companions. I don't think they have enough space in their inventories to take all of this stuff. Do they? <laughs> okay, I'm kind of surprised if they do, but oh well, never mind. Okay, so that means that we can now make our way on to Cure Ore, which is uh, what I wanted to do anyway. Let's go for some infantry, let's go for some more of those. We've got some more cavalry, and our Pathfinder friend has leveled up. So let's go for some, I was thinking intelligence, but I'm actually thinking we'll go for strength. You know what? For the first couple of levels, we're going to go for intelligence to 12, and then we're going to get pathfinding 4, and then from there, then we'll level up strength to about 10, maybe 9, dependent on what kind of armor we want her to wear. But otherwise, we'll go for some spotting, and we will also go for... We want her to be good in combat, but we, we mostly want her for her party skills. So I suppose tracking would probably be good as well, even though tracking is widely regarded as not being a particularly, eh, not a particularly useful skill. It is definitely something that I would like to specialize in just, just, for, just for the pure sake that we have it. And that's it. Okay, so it seems like Barney actually did level up. So let's go for another point in charisma. And now I would probably want to go for some more leadership. Maybe, because we're actually going to be starting to get a number of pretty dangerous wages increases. Because, uh, you know, whenever you upgrade an infantry to a cavalry unit, their wages skyrocket just for the pure fact that they are now a mounted unit. So there you go. We can sell that. Look at that. Nice amount of, nice amount of gear right there. And we can also sell all of this stuff. Look at that. Selling it for 900 dinars. That's really, really nice. And uh, we can also go into the tavern here. There's a ransom broker. I wonder if there's a ransom broker in every single town at this point. I think there might be. Okay, so these farmers can actually join you if you want. And uh, we can also get some woman warriors if we so desire. I don't know what they level up into, so I'm probably not going to do that. But otherwise, I am just looking for some companions here. Nope, seems like there aren't any. And uh, we've got a decent amount of cash. We've got a decent amount of cash, and I'm thinking we might look for a tournament or something like that. I'm thinking 
generally just leveling up our forces is a really good idea because obviously getting as many cavalry as we can handle is going to be very very important later down the line there is a tournament mm. there is actually a tournament going on okay so let's actually just take a look what do i currently have here okay so two teams of four members each and that's my payout that's the payout that i currently can go for uh two teams of three members what about, what about this mm, what about that 485 489 uh, it doesn't really make much sense does it so one-handed and shield yeah that's perfectly fine with me all right let's try it okay i've got a one-handed should i should be able to do quite well here i mean i've got I've, I've leveled up a little bit since last time not my not my power strike or anything like that but I don't really need good power strike to be able to take these guys down, as you can see, because uh, they they're wearing tournament armor, you know. Tournament armor is not exactly the most protective thing ever. Nice. Nice. There we go. Oh, that was that was Yaroglek. That was Yaroglek himself. No wonder he did massive damage to us. Yeah, no wonder. Okay, so there you go. We actually did gain 500 dinars from that, which is really, really good. We are rank 1 as well, so this is going to be working out quite nicely. And uh, technically, actually using a horse on this battlefield would be quite advantageous. I think it would work out quite well. I might actually end up losing it in this one. Yes, yes I am, because my, uh, my guys are not doing a very good job right here. As you can see, they got completely... And utterly murdered in every single way. So yeah, that, that that's that's a thing. You see, that's a thing. Even if you think you have an overwhelming advantage just because you have the uh, the perfect setup, especially for me, I feel like being an infantry with a one-handed and a shield is probably the. Um, it, it depends on the battlefield, obviously, but I think that's probably the likeliest chance that I have of achieving some kind of victory. I wonder who we actually have on our... Oh, no, never mind. Apparently that skipped ahead. Okay. Well, that is perfectly fine. I didn't do that, by the way. They did that themselves. All right, so let's see if we can do something here. Oh, that guy's using a manual attack with a lance. Probably not the best idea, sir. But we are going to just try and eliminate him. Nice. There we go. We got him. I could actually even go on his horse if I wanted to. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Okay, he's dead. He's dead. Okay, this guy's got a two-handed. We've got to be re really, really careful here. Or not. Because <laughs> he just decided not to block. Okay, interesting. And... Give me give me this kill too. Ah, I've got to block him. Got to be a bit careful here. He's using a two-handed, so... Oh, Beheshta. You, you, you're not very good with a two-handed, sir. You should probably refrain from doing that. But there you go. Gain another 180 experience and some more renown as well. Renown is perfect. Absolutely perfect for us right now. And uh, that is hopefully going to result in us gaining some kind of vassalage offer. And bear in mind that vassalage is definitely something that I'm going to think about. I obviously don't think I need it necessarily. But uh, it could be quite fun to participate as a vassal of someone's and whoever decides to uh, give us vassalage it might be kind of cool to you know spend some time with them oh it seems like i didn't even get any uh, any money for winning that even though i technically was the winner but okay <laughs> i guess you do need to get a couple of kills here and there this guy's going to go into the wall and let's take him down yes there we are i mean they, they you know they got to take uh they got to take the damage if uh, if they make the mistake of running into the wall. This guy's going to just absolutely murder me, isn't he? Oh, maybe not. Okay, here we go. This guy's a horse archer. Got to be careful about that. Okay, he's off his mount. This is dangerous. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, remember that guy? Wasn't that, isn't that the same guy that absolutely murdered me beforehand? Yeah, it might have been. Anyway, let's continue. 
Because uh, remember that time in the previous episode when I went into a tournament and then I was like, oh, let me just uh, fight this two-handed weapon user. And then all of a sudden, he just cleaved me in two and I died instantly. Yeah, that was... That was very memorable. Ah, now he speeds up. Of course he does. Just when I'm about to eliminate him. Got to be a bit careful here, though. We do not want to be in a situation where we get lanced in the back. Oh, so sorry, Beheshta. I am so sorry. Uh, but there you go. That was another victory for us. And that's it. That's the end. And look at that. We actually gained some wonderful, wonderful armor. 50. Look at that. 50 renown right there total. And uh, yeah, a decent amount of dinars. Decent amount of dinars. So let's actually have a look at what this is. Wow. Now that's actually pretty cool. Is it? No, it's actually not. It is actually pretty awful. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised about that. I am actually pretty surprised. What, what if I sell it? It sells for 39. Okay. Well, that's, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That is a bit weird considering this armor up here. I mean, this should have been better in my opinion. I feel like this armor should have definitely been better in some way or another, but oh well. Not a big deal, not a big deal. I was mainly coming for the Renown and for the cash. So I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, we're going to go for another point in leadership. And then we're going to start leveling up Barney's combat skills when he levels up a little bit more. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.